Time now for Uncancelled. Where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. When audiences sit down to enjoy a new BBC adaptation of Jules Verne's epic adventure around the world in 80 days this festive season, I can guarantee what they'll be thinking. God, I hope we get an exploration of colonialism and Victorian era racial and sexual politics. Not. That's what its star David Tennant believes anyway, though. Speaking to the Radio Times, he said of his globe-trotting protagonist, who first appeared in print in 1872, in many ways, uh, Phileas Fogg represents everything that's alarming about peculiar... uh, Sorry, alarming and peculiar about that old sense of British empire. Potentially, it's a story about an England that should elicit very little sympathy. Verne chooses to make uh, Phileas Fogg a particularly stuffy Englishman. We're showing a different type of stuffy Englishman. He's very damaged. Everything is a trauma for him. Well... Tonight, Rod Little says enough with woke remakes ruining cultural classics. And he joins me now. Rod Little, this is so typical, isn't it? It's so typical. David Tennant and the BBC can't just make a a, a proper adaptation of Around the World of 80 Days. They've got to turn it woke. Of course they have. Uh, I'm looking for a faithful adaptation. A faithful adaptation. No, no, they couldn't possibly do that. Uh, and it's such a great story. You know, it's exactly the sort of story, exactly the sort of um, grand uh, production that the BBC could do very, very well. Get all the family around listening to it, watching it uh, about a wager uh, that is laid a, a great story by Jules Verne about a man who has to get around the world in 80 days, has various incredible mishaps as he goes around the world just about manages to do it, you know, it's it just a magnificent story. But no, I, I know you keep a really tight ship on this programme, Dan, uh, and, and uh, it, it's got to be fit for public viewing. Obviously it has. But reading what David Tennant said, what an incredibly pompous tit that man is. Uh, I, I mean, the, the self-obsession, the narcissism that comes through. We're going to make Phileas Fogg, this is a hero of it, a damaged individual who has suffered trauma. I mean, get a grip. And the problem is that it's, it's a kind of double hypocrisy. I don't mind if David Tennant and the people who produced this want to make a story about a damaged individual who shows up the British Empire for being vile and repulsive. Their own story. They can do that. But they won't do it. And the reason they won't do it is because they know that nobody in their right minds would watch it. So what they do is they, they, they piggyback upon a program, upon a piece of work, which they know is very popular, which they know will draw audiences in, and they use that to run their own fatuous opinions down everybody's throat. And of course, it's, it's far from being the first time they've done this. There was a production a couple of years ago, two to three years ago, of Watership Down, which I really enjoyed reading as a as a 13, 14-year-old kid. Uh, and suddenly we were, we were faced with a watership down in which there were a new cohort of rabidly uh, uh, feminist uh, rabbits, female rabbits, <laughs> who just figured nowhere in the original version of watership down. And not only that, but Strawberry, one of the rabbits, seem to have been transgendered in the new version of Watership Down. And again, I have no objection. If they want to write a story about uh, extremely feminist rabbits and a transgendered rabbit, go ahead and do it. But don't spoil the memory and don't betray the truth of the original stories that were written, because that's what they're doing. 